welcome Lloyd Schwartz, Poet Laureate of Somerville, Massachusetts, Pulitzer Prize winner. Um, it's just a real honor to have you on the show. Pleasure to be here. Um, now, um, let me just do a brief introduction. It doesn't really do you justice, but it gives us an idea. Um, you're the Frederick S. Troy Professor of English, and you teach in creative writing, MFA program at the University of Massachusetts. You've had four books of poetry published. Um, um, one up, some of them are Good Night, Gracie, Good Night, Gracie, Cairo, Cairo Traffic, and Little Kisses, was the most recent one. Uh, you were published a poem uh, in the American Review, which, if you remember, was a great magazine, as Lloyd has told me in private conversation. And since then, uh, his poems have been in the New Yorker, the Atlantic, the New Republic, Paris Review, Kenyan Review, Partisan Review, Plowshares, and a host of others. Uh, he's been selected for a Pushcart Prize, the Best American Poetry, um, uh, and he was awarded a National Endowment for the Arts Fellowship Grant in Poetry. He won the Daniel Verajan Prize, Verusian. Verusian Prize from the New England Poetry Club, and the height of his career, Somerville Poet Laureate. Here you are, yeah, and and, and proud of it. Um, sort of like the. Uh, mission statement of your Somerville poet lawyer thing is you don't have to be a poet uh, to have poetry in your life and I think that's what drives you on this project that you're undertaking yeah yeah well I that I think that's true you know the the, the first um, event that I that I put together in coordination with the Somerville Arts Council was to have a group of Somerville citizens Beginning, beginning with the mayor and the former mayor, uh, uh, no, uh, Mike Capuano. Oh, Mike Capuano, okay. Uh, and have them come and read a poem that has been important in their lives. Uh, obviously, not written by them. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we had thirty people. Mm -hmm. uh, city councilors and um, uh, a psychiatrist and an artist and Miss Black Massachusetts of 2018 mm -hmm. uh, and a really spectacular array of people um, each reading, each picking a poem mm -hmm. and that, that was important to them and it was Mm -hmm. It was amazing how it, you know, mm -hmm. 30 people read and it seemed to go by. And I, I, I've been to poetry readings in which far fewer people read that seemed to take much longer. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it was, it was a great, I was there, it was a great event. Thank you. And to see all those people together, at, uh, unifying. Now, I'll ask you... Um, how has your poet laureate tenure, how has it been going? What have you been doing? Other, we discussed the first thing you've been doing. Yeah. Well, so far, um, uh, the other thing that I have been doing is meeting once a month, Saturday morning, mostly at uh, the little east branch of the Somerville Public Library. Although you came to Davis and Square. I, and I did Bagel Bards, yeah. Bagel Bards one, one Saturday. And so far, I have been the person, I pick a poem that I really love, that's important to me, and whoever wants to come and just talk about poetry and talk about that particular poem, uh, everyone is welcome. Uh, we've had, um, I think the Bagel Bards, we had our biggest crowd over last, uh, last Saturday. We had a dozen people, and we've had three or four people, and there are some regulars who like to, like to come every month, and there's usually someone new, uh, and it's just great, and we, it's not, I, I, I try, I mean, I'm an English teacher, so, I, I guess there's some element of academic mm -hmm. uh, viewpoint, but I try it. I, I really mean it to be, you know, what does this, what does this poem do for you? What is mm -hmm. it? 
what does it mean to you? And what about this line? And mm -hmm. uh, what 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 appeals to you about uh, mm -hmm. about this? And we've had an an interesting uh, spectrum of poems. The the next one is going to be on Saturday, December seventh, and we're going to do two poems. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to do Keats's Ode to a Nightingale and Yeats's Sailing to Byzantium, which I think. I think they have a number of things in common, and I think they'll be fun to talk about. Great. Now, um, you said to me that you know you've been in Somerville for many years, for, years. for like forty years, uh, thirty-five uh, not years. Quite for 1984, I came to Somerville. But yet, it took it took uh, a while for you to feel. It has a home, you said it, well, and 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 yeah. and then maybe this is sort of a, you know, coda to this. Well, yeah, I mean it's, you know, I I moved to Somerville from Cambridge. I, 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 grew up in New York, and I came to graduate school, mm -hmm. uh, in Cambridge. I went I I went to Harvard, and and Cambridge seemed to be. I lived all over Cambridge. I lived in Central Square. I lived in Huron Village and mm. and kind of Harvard Square. Mm. And I felt, oh well, you know, I I, I live in Cambridge. Mm. And so it was a kind of uh, it's a kind of shock to move to Somerville, and and um, it required some getting used to. And I felt like. You know, I I, I, I I felt bereft that I have that I lost my Cambridge parking sticker. Okay. And and it took a while to get used to, but it also Somerville has changed so much. When you came here it was the old boy network and all that. Boy, was it ever. Yeah. I I tell you the the, the the funny story about uh, about my moving to Cambridge. Um, moving to Somerville or Cambridge? Oh, I'm, I mean to Somerville, of course. Uh, moving to Somerville, um, I, um, I, 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 I was able to buy a house. Mm -hmm. uh, why I could afford to do that is its, it's, is its own interesting story. Um, but I bought a house from a young couple whose kids were about to start school and they thought um, they could um, they could move to a, a town with a better school system than, than Somerville. Mm -hmm. So they were leaving Somerville. I think they made a big mistake mm -hmm. uh, because I think what's happened over the, you know, certainly over the last few decades is that Somerville has really developed a, a first-rate school system but they told me they were um, they were um, they were an American family with two kids of Irish descent mm -hmm. and they said um, you know look at you, you, you see, look at this street and he and they said you know how you can tell mm -hmm. which families are Irish families and which families are Italian families and I said, no, how, how, do, how can you do that? And, and they said, well, the Italian families all have tomato plants next to their Madonna statues, mm -hmm. but the Irish families don't. Right, <laughs> right. And boy, has that changed a lot. I mean, there are still Irish families in Italian. Well, I remember you telling me uh, when we were at the Block 11 that, that you could now you can walk to the Brooks Brothers store. and before I, you <laughs> No, if anyone had told me I could do that, in 1984, I would have laughed in their face. Yeah. But Brooks Brothers and my next door neighbor is a Haitian minister, and and the neighborhood has become incredibly diverse: Brazilians and Mexicans, and all the re all the new restaurants mm -hmm. that have opened. And it's really, mm -hmm. it's a very different and a, and a and a much livelier place than it than, than it was been. yeah now in a um 
uh, commentary on your latest book of poetry. It came out in 2017, right. Little Kisses. Um, the one described you as the um, king of the one-liner. So you like to bring a little Bosch belt into the poetry, uh, you know, uh, that helps. I, I like poems that have a sense of humor. I yeah. don't think they, that you, you can write a serious poem and it could still have jokes in it. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be lugubrious or, mm -hmm. or heavy-handed. And, mm -hmm. and I, those, I like poems like that. Mm -hmm. And um, my, you know, Elizabeth Bishop is one of my favorite poets. And I teach her and I have studied her. And, but, but she has terrific one-liners in, in, in her poems. Her poems are very witty and 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 charming as well as as well as very serious and 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 very moving mm -hmm. okay. uh, I mean you think everything of, informs each other humor and seriousness totally. yeah. sure yeah sure um, you think I mean maybe her most famous line now is the art of losing isn't hard to master right right and it's a serious line, and it's a very moving poem about about loss, and yet there's something very witty about playing with m the idea of mastering the art of losing. Right, right, exactly. And um, so, I try to, you know, I I hope my students uh, will, you know. I hope they want, I want them to have a sense of humor in... in right, they want to be, yeah, it's not all about suffering. And yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> now, um, well, it is all about yeah, suffering, yeah. but it can also be yeah, funny. It can be funny suffering. <laughs> yeah, right, yes. Now, you won a Guggenheim this year, Fellowship? I uh, did. Uh, tell me, what are you going to do with it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I am going to, uh, I'm going to travel a little, mm -hmm. and... Um, I will sock some of it away for a rainy day. I, yeah, uh, do you have any specific study or, I mean? I, I, I don't have to. You don't have to. Uh, I, you, you used to, I mean, I, I um, you know, when you, when you apply, you have to say what you're going to, what you would do with it if you, if, you, if you got it. And I think in poetry, the, the stock answer is you're going to work on your next book. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm. I'm already thinking doing about that. is your next book. What do you yeah. think your next book's going to be about? Well, I think it's going to be. Uh, well, I never know what, what what my poems are going to be about until after I write them and then try to put them together in some way that makes sense. Um, I think the next book is going to be a a new and selected. So it will have a section of new poems that, that haven't been in a book before, and it will also have a selection of poems from my previous books. It'll, so it's, it, it's something maybe more resembling a kind of life, life's work. Mm -hmm. It won't have everything I've ever written, but it will, have, it will put my new poems in a, in, in a, in a context. So like collected poems and new poems, collected and yeah. new poems. Yeah, well, it won't be collected because collected means it's everything. Oh, okay. But it'll be selected, and so there'll be some poems from each of my previous books. Okay, and looking forward to that. Um, <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. Now, I, I didn't just ever discuss this with you, but you were a poet in residence in Tanglewood? In 2008? Oh, I was. Yeah. And that was a really great experience. It was a wonderful experience. Okay. Um, I was invited um, by one of the composers in residence mm -hmm. uh, to be poet in residence. And what that involved was that there were, there were eight young uh, composition fellows and so they were assigned to each choose a poem of mine a short poem and they had to write a piece of music 
And then there were a whole bunch of vocal fellows, so singers, young singers who were working there, and young pianists. So um, a, one of the eight, compo each of the eight composers had to pick one of my poems, and they had to compose it. They had only a few weeks to do that, and the singer and the piano the piano player, the pianist, had to learn the poems, uh, had to learn the music, and uh, at the end of the summer there was a little concert in which um, all the, these eight new musical settings of, of my poems were were performed. And Do you have I, a recording of them? Um, I... Yeah, I think there. I think there is a recording of them. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a recording of that of that concert um, uh, somewhere on my computer. Okay. I, uh, um, and there's maybe there's something on YouTube, but I'm not sure. It's the. I don't think it's the the whole concert. It who is who's who is uh, running Tanglewood then? At, um, uh, well, it was uh, the. The music director was James Levine at, okay. at, at that time, but he, he didn't have anything to do with this. Yeah, he's with this, sort of fallen from grace. Yeah. He has fallen from grace. It's, yeah. a, it's a sad story. Yeah. Mm. Um, so I would, you know, you have about, actually you have about um, 12 minutes to read some from your, some from your Oh, work. okay. I will, uh, I will I, I, I will do that. I think I will um, uh, this is um, the beginning of November okay. and I'll read uh, this is not a this is not a brand new poem, but it's a I, I think it's a sort of timely poem. Uh, it's about autumn and it's called leaves, leaves. and leaves, like the song like the song. No, that's not exactly like the song, but it's um, it's in three sections. Each section is a sonnet, mm. and it's about it's, a, it's, it's moving to to For Massachusetts. Those of us who are not poets, what is a sonnet? Sonnet is. I have very liberal idea about a sonnet. I think it's any poem that's fourteen lines. Some of them have rhyme patterns. Some of them don't. Some of them have different patterns. Uh, and it's a tradition that goes back to, you know, the 13th century in Italy. Uh, sonnets came into English mm, maybe a few decades before Shakespeare's time, and they've always remained popular. People are still writing them. So this is a tr kind of triple sonnet, and it's, it's called Leaves. One, every October it becomes important, no, necessary, to see the leaves turning, to be surrounded by leaves turning. It's not just the symbolism to confront in the death of the year your death, one blazing farewell appearance, though the irony isn't lost on you that nature is most seductive when it's about to die, flaunting the dazzle of its incipient exit, an ending that at least so far the effects of human progress, pollution, acid rain, have not yet frightened you enough to make you believe is real. That is, you know this ending is a deception because of course nature is always renewing itself. The trees don't die, they just pretend, go out in style, and return in style, a new style. Two, is it deliberate how far they make you go, especially if you live in the city, to get far enough away from home to see not just trees, but only trees? the boring highways, road signs, high speeds, ten axle trucks passing you as if they were in an even greater hurry than you to look at leaves? 
So you drive in terror for literal hours, and it looks like rain or snow, but it's probably just clouds, too cloudy to see any color. And you wonder, given the poverty of your memory, which road had the most color last year? But it doesn't matter, since you're probably too late anyway, or too early. Whichever road you take will be the wrong one, and you've probably come all this way for nothing. Three. You'll be driving along depressed, when suddenly a cloud will move, and the sun will muscle through and ignite the hills. It may not last, probably won't last, but for a moment the whole world comes to, wakes up, proves it lives. It lives. Red, yellow, orange, brown, russet, ochre, vermilion, gold, flame and rust, flame and rust, the permutations of burning. You're on fire. Your eyes are on fire. It won't last. You don't want it to last. You can't stand anymore but you don't want it to stop. It's what you've come for. It's what you'll come back for. It won't stay with you, but you'll remember that it felt like nothing else you felt or something you felt that also didn't last. Metaphor for life. Yes. That's true. Well, and everything is a metaphor for life. If you think about all things, Absolutely. Yes, you know, William Collins Williams says things. Right. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm sure I'm not the first one I've told you. <laughs> well, um, that got to be, um, that was um, picked a few years ago for be Best American Poetry. Okay. And I was very happy about that, very I honored. Yeah. Honored about that. So it's. It's good. Um, you still have uh, six minutes. Oh, s six minutes. Wow. Okay. Um, I'll read. I'll read a poem about my mother. Dave. Um, she has been. Um, she's been a great source of inspiration. Okay. Uh, to me. So you get about four minutes, hopefully. He tells his mother what he's working on. I'm writing a poem about you. You are? What's it about? It's the story about your childhood, the horses in the river. The ones that nearly drowned, I saved them. You told it to me just a few weeks ago. I should dig up more of my memories. I wish you would. Like when I lived on the farm and one of the girls fell down the well? Yes. I forget if it was Rose or Pauline. It was a deep well. I remember that story. Have you finished your poem? I'm still working on it. You mean you're correcting it with commas and semicolons? Exactly. When can I see it? As soon as it's finished. Is it an epic? It's not that long. No, I mean all my thoughts, the flashes of what's going through my life, the whole family history, living through the woe, the river and the water. I know. Will it be published? I have to finish it first. It's better to write about real life. That's more important than writing something fanciful. I try to write all my poems about real life. You see, the apple never falls far from the tree. I guess not. You're my apple. There's probably a worm crawling through that apple. Then it's got something sweet to chew on. Well, 
you're my tree. Yes, I'm your tree. You're an apple. I'm a tree. So this was an actual conversation you had, it or is. did you alter it in any way for well, the sake of the poem? Yeah, yeah prop not much. Yeah. Not much. It was a real conversation mm -hmm. that I had. There were, my mom, mother was beginning to lose her memory, and then every now and then she would remember something, and we would have these mm. conversations. Very poetic conversations. Yeah. 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 Was she um, poetically inclined? No, you know, I think she read poems to me when yeah. I was a little kid, but 